All right, right now let's focus on another component, which is this timeline stopwatch component, which represents our stopwatch. And if we go inside the file with this component here, we're gonna see that this component contains quite a bit of logic. So firstly, we declare a local state of the stopwatch by using these variables. And down here, to be able to manage this state, we also declare a couple of functions, which is gonna be responsible for making stopwatch component work, such as start function to start the stopwatch, stop function to stop it, and reset function to reset current time of the stopwatch. So as you can see, this component currently contains a lot of logic, but why don't we just take all this logic and move it in a separate place? So for example, we can create new composable, which is going to be responsible for managing stopwatch state. So I'm going to create new composable inside our composables folder with the name stopwatch.js. And right here, let's just export the function with the name use stopwatch. Here I'm following the convention of naming composable functions and start the name with prefix use. And now let's go ahead most of the logic from timeline stopwatch component and put it directly into this stopwatch function. So I'm just transferring over registration of the watcher as well as three functions start, stop and reset. And as we can see in the body of this function, we reference variable timeline item a lot of times. So instead of referencing this property on the props object, which by the way we don't have an access to inside this composable, we're going to pass one parameter to this function, which will be timeline item object. And then we can simply remove all mentions of the props object. So next, what I'm going to do is copy all these imports from timeline stopwatch component and paste it into our new file with the composable. And then I'm going to remove all unused imports and keep only those that are used. And of course, the same thing we have to do inside timeline stopwatch component. So let's switch over to this component and remove unused imports here. And there is also one more thing that we still have to move into our stopwatch function, and that is this state variables. So let's cut them from here and paste it into use stopwatch function. Again, we don't have access to the props object, so let's remove this mention and import function ref on top. And now whatever we're gonna need to gain access for inside this composable, we will basically return. So down here, I'm going to return an object from this composable, which is going to contain all the data and functions that we need to reference from outside. So in this case, I'm going to include in here two state variables, such as seconds and is running. And in addition to that, we're also going to expose a couple of functions, start, stop, and reset. We absolutely have to do so because all these functions are going to be used inside timeline stopwatch component. And now I'm basically going to copy this whole thing, then switch over to timeline stopwatch component, paste it right here, and this will be the structured value from our composable function use stopwatch that we're gonna call right here. And since this function accepts one parameter which is timeline item, here we can simply pass it through, like so, by referencing timeline item object on the props object. And then let's scroll up and write an import statement for the composable function use stopwatch and import this function from the composables folder, like this. And as we can see, the ref function is no longer used in this component, so we can remove its import. And then let's scroll down to the place where we are calling our new composable. And this time, as we can see, this component has become much leaner because we have actually extracted all the logic responsible for managing stopwatch state into a separate composable function. And here we're only receiving some state variables and functions that we're gonna use in this component's template to manage stopwatch. And by the way, we can also get rid of this is start button disabled variable by basically moving the expression which this variable holds directly in the template, like this. And as we know inside the template, we don't need to reference props object directly in order to access the prop. So let's remove this mention. And then right here, we no longer need this constant is start button disabled. So I'm gonna remove it. And so what we are end up with in this component is just a couple of imports 
then declaration of only one prop timeline item and usage of our new composable function use stopwatch. So this component is much more simple right now. And now before finishing this lesson, let's finally check everything in the browser. So I'm going to mainly check the behavior of the stopwatch. Let's start tracking the time for a particular activity and make sure this time will be decreasing on the activities page. And on the progress page, the scale is growing as well. So this part is working. Let's also try to stop the stopwatch for a moment, then start it again. And also reset the time of the stopwatch. So as we can see, the behavior of the stopwatch is predictable as before. That means everything is fine and we can continue our development in the next lesson.